who's coming out of the pharmaceutical world. <laughs> you may remember Incest Therapeutics for their half a million dollar donation. I think it was in, I want to say it was in Florida. Uh, for their or Arizona, I hope it wasn't Arizona because that's where marijuana actually lost. But anyhow, they they put up half a million dollars. Maybe it was in both places. Maybe it was in everywhere that was trying to legalize marijuana for recreational or even medical use. These guys got money to burn. They had money to burn. They still do. They got billions. They manufacture one product in 2016, and that was a fentanyl mouth spray. They got patents. Uh, getting approved right now for another product that they want to start selling and that would be uh, artificial marijuana or some kind of a marijuana product uh, um, I'm get into it I'm just gonna I'm gonna read this so it's, this is gonna be a clip here um, Babbage Michael Babbage Michael Babich, the former chief executive of Insys Therapeutics and protege of its founder, the billionaire John Kapoor, was arrested and charged today with conspiring to bribe doctors to prescribe Insys mouth spray version of fentanyl, unnecessarily potentially harming patients and defrauding insurers. Insys released a statement reading, in part, the charges against the individuals discussed in the Department of Justice press release related to previously disclosed or relate to previously disclosed investigations. Insys continues to cooperate with all the relevant authorities in its ongoing investigations and it's committed, is committed to complying with laws and regulations that govern our products and business practices. <clears throat> That's a lot to take in there. All right, let's go back to the top here. Michael Babich was charged uh, about, I think it was 2014. Maybe it was, I don't know. It's confusing because this, this isn't the first time incest or incest employees have been charged with the same exact scheme. And we'll talk more about the scheme in a minute. But uh, what, apparently what's going on is uh, that's, that the, the, this company that manufactures only this fentanyl mouth spray is actually pushing this stuff like, it's, like they're drug pushers. And the doctor is like the middleman. And it's almost like a gangster style uh, system. They bribe the doctors and uh, they're like, oh yeah, we'll do you favors and we'll, we'll help you fake forms and stuff. We'll get into that. So Babich, age 40, was uh, one of six Insys employees arrested and charged according to the indictment filed by the U.S. Attorney's Office of the District of Massachusetts. The others are also former Insys executives. Alec Berlakoff, 42, the former Vice President of Sales. Richard M. Simon, 46, the former National Director of Sales. Former Regional Sales Director Sunrise Lee, 36. And Joseph A. Rowan, 43, of Panama City, Florida. And former Vice President of Managed Markets, uh, Michael J. Gurry, 53. And like I said, the, I started seeing arrests uh, for this back in like 2014, maybe, or as, as definitely 2015 and 2016, more arrests were coming in. And it's almost as if the company has this expenditure to say, all right, do this until they bust you and then we'll just, you'll be gone for a while. Somebody else will take over. They'll do that until they get busted. Everybody gets big payouts. Nobody really goes to jail. So it's no big deal. Well, let's hope that they hold their feet to the fire this time, because this is some pretty serious stuff. If you haven't heard of fentanyl, fentanyl is a synthetic form of morphine that is 50 times stronger than heroin. And the mouth spray, really, it ain't, who's to stop someone from doing this? You know, oh, that first one wasn't enough. Let me try another one. How about another one? Oh, that didn't, three felt good yesterday. Let me do four. I don't know. I've never seen the thing, so I don't know, but it sounds pretty deadly. And I'm guessing that this avalanche and spike of fentanyl dust that we've seen in the last year is because of these. Now, there's other fentanyl products out there that are causing massive amounts of overdoses. You might cause spikes, but uh, fentanyl in general being in the public's hand is a bad thing. How the FDA approved that, I don't fucking get it. The FDA didn't approve marijuana because it's dangerous, because it's not medicine. I don't know. Whatever their fucking reason is. It's not something that you could kill yourself with with a couple of a squirts of, of a mist into your mouth. No way. You could, you could not ever kill yourself with, uh, with mouth spray marijuana. 
unless it was cut with alcohol or something. I mean, this is ridiculous, man. What's going on, DEA? How is this? How is this not like considered a a straight up drug cartel or some kind of a, a illegal enterprise? Oh, because they've changed all the laws and they've lobbied to make it so they can get away with this kind of shit. Well, they ain't. They haven't lobbied to get away with that kind of shit. They've lobbied to get away with, you know, getting a fentanyl mouse spray approved for medical use. This stuff, 50 times stronger than heroin. Come on, give me a break, man. This thing is has no medical value at all. Zero. Oh, yeah, it does. It kills pain for people with with chronic pain or with, you know, debilitating pain, 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 pain. All right, so you're telling me that there's nothing else that you can give that person but this shit that's 50 times stronger than heroin. Then you could overdose on it with just a couple of pushes of a button and die. <laughs> And this shit's showing up on the streets everywhere. Fentanyl, they got the suckers, they got they got every kind of form of it, the patches, they got this shit now. And this shit's been showing up on the streets for over a decade. Uh, they sh Every time you hear about a massive amount of people dying from heroin overdoses, it's always because it was cut with fentanyl. And why wouldn't it be? You know, the average person that does heroin just doesn't think one day, oh, I'm going to do a dose that's 50 times stronger than my normal dose. But when you do your normal dose and it's loaded with fentanyl, that's probably what's happening, bro. So they're basically allowed to get away with this time and time again. They've been doing it for years now with the same product. It's almost as if they know the product doesn't stand up on its own. It's not going to make them billions of dollars if just people that are dying of cancer and are on the final stages of death are allowed to access it. They want it to be accessed by everyone. They want it to flood the market. I mean, that's just sick and perverted. All right, now Kapoor, he's the billionaire guy in, in all this. Uh, as described in a Forbes profile earlier this year, Kapoor originally recruited Babich from Northern Trust, a bank, to work in the billionaire's family office, helping to manage his investments. Babich later told, uh, became chief executive of Insys, which was developing a mouse spray version of fentanyl, one of the most potent opioid drugs for use in cancer patients. Kapoor was chairman of incest, leaving day-to-day -day operations to Babbage. Um, you know, that's nice. See, Babbage is your highest fall guy on the totem pole. And that's to protect Kapoor. There's even the family above Kapoor. I think. I'm pretty sure Kapoor isn't the top guy. He was arrested too. Uh, okay, yeah, he is the founder. So, um, I believe incest therapeutics. Yeah, they're they're. I'm thinking of a different family for a second. There, I was thinking of the family that does the. Uh, they do the oxycontin. All right, so yeah, this is Kapoor. This is his operation. Now they he's had he has a hierarchy of fall guys set up, but this time they nailed him too. Um. His quote here on not leading day-to-day -day operations, like he's, that's, you know, what what do you need Fall Guys for? To take your, uh, to, to give them your story so that you don't get in trouble. Um, what is his story? My involvement is I'm an investor, Kapoor told Forbes earlier this year. As an investor, I'm on a board. As a board member, I'm an investor. As a board member and an investor, you are involved, but you are not involved in day-to-day -day operations. Uh, and that's where the problems come in. <laughs> The problems come in on day-to-day -day operations when you have people uh, directly underneath you literally bribing doctors to prescribe fentanyl mouth spray to just any old buddy that walks through the door and then forge documents saying that they were can the cancer patients for the DEA. The DEA. This is ridiculous, man. I can't believe this shit. Uh, Babich, in turn, hired Ber Berlikoff who formerly marketed a similar fentanyl pro product at Cephalon, another drug maker. All these drug makers all have their own little opioid. You know, it's like the legal heroin market. You know, you got your guy that has the Vicodins, and then you, that's a company, and they're run by one family, and they own the, the rights to that and the generics. And then you got the, the Percocets. That's one family that owns the hydrocodone for that. 
And that's why they have different names. They're essentially, you know, you got your hydrocodone and you got your hydrocodone. You got your cut with acetaminophen. It doesn't even matter. They just they dress these pills up different. And that's that level. Then you got the next level up, which is your Oxycontin and those kind of things. Uh, high dose hydrocodone or morphine, you know, or synthetic morphine. That's when you start getting into this shit or the Dilaudid, the synthetic heroin. And all these companies are run by one family. You know, they're all like, oh, yeah, I get to be this heroin dealer and you get to be that heroin dealer. And they're all selling opioids, which is uh, synthetic. They, you, if you got the opiates, then you got the opioids, the fake synthetic analog made in a lab. You still need the actual drugs. Uh, no, you don't. You can just make these in a lab. I don't know. I'm not really uh, that scientific about opioids. I haven't really studied them that much. But I know for sure that they don't cost as nearly as much to make and to, to, you know, these guys are making billions of dollars, uh, marking something up like thousands of a percent, the deadliest drugs in the world. Opioids are the deadliest drugs in the world. Did I say that enough times for that to sink in? More people die from opioids than any other drug in the world. Um, my involvement is I'm an investor. Sure you are. Now we go back to Babbage hiring Berlikoff. Um, he's the next guy down on the totem pole of, uh, you know, fall guys. Ins Insys product called Subsys is sprayed under the tongue so that the opioid painkiller is rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream. The only faster way to get it in your bloodstream is to inject it intravenously. Um, the, the purpose is for allowing cancer patients, particularly those who cannot swallow, to have rapid relief from their pain. But subsis is not approved for use in people who do not have cancer. Among the allegations made by federal prosecutors is that incest employees lied, telling insurance pa insurers patients had cancer when they did not in order to get the insurer to pay. And they're also lying to the DEA because that patient has a DEA number assigned to them for them pills. And if the DEA did their investigation and looked at this patient and was like, hey, look, they were prescribed something that only cancer patients should be prescribed. And all they have is a stubbed toe. And uh, yeah, that that's against the law to lie to the DEA. Incidentally, it's, it's a fucking felony. So anyway. But the indictment contains more evidence about the plans to pay doctors and nurse practitioners to convince them to prescribe substance. So not only are they faking people who might otherwise be prescribed something else, or maybe they came there wanting the fentanyl mouth spray, or they heard that this doctor's doing favors or whatever. Not only are they doing that, but they also... Uh, doctors and nurses are recommending that, oh, hey, I know what you need. You need some of the subsis. Don't worry if you don't have cancer. You really need this stuff. I bet you I can get, I can, I can hook you up. Ooh, my God. That's, that is pusher style. That's pusher status right there. That's drug pusher status. That's just like they got this, you know, this guy over at the corner of the playground talking to little Jimmy and he gives him, he gives him some heroin. First one's free, Jimmy. Here you go. Knock yourself out. Jimmy comes back the next day and he's like, man, that was good stuff, man. How much? Or you, let me have some more. Oh, yeah, that's that's going to be five bucks. Well, that's the way these guys are. They probably, oh, here, try this. Take this home and see if that worked for you. They all, why, doctors have big boxes of sample packs. I've never understood that. Um, that should be illegal. <laughs> The method for this is common uh, pharmaceutical industry practice of paying doctors to give scientific talks to their peers in order to increase prescribing for a drug. Now, I understand why that's a thing, and it is a legitimate thing, in my opinion. It is, it's a good thing to have doctors talking to nurses and other people in the health uh, industry, health care, health professionals, letting them know, hey, here's this wonderful new thing on the market. It's called uh, cannabidiol. And it basically stops uh, seizures in children instantly within one minute. And we have a mouth spray that does it. So if you know somebody with, that has a kid with seizures or whatever, you want, you know, that's why that's a good thing. It's not a good thing when you're talking about pushing out drugs to people that shouldn't be prescribed them 
And furthermore, drugs that are highly addictive and dangerous, like, like opioid mouth sprays, for example, like subsis. Um, so, yeah, I understand that. In this case, the prosecutors allege the money given for those talks was solely there as a reward for prescribing subsis. So not only is it bad that you're talking about a deadly addictive drug that isn't even necessary to prescribe unless you have cancer and shouldn't even be prescribed unless you have cancer, but now you're talking about, all right, they're usually, let's just pretend like, let's, I always like to do real world. You got to go to a meeting so you can learn about this subsist stuff. And you're like, damn it, I got too much shit to do. There's thing, I don't have time for this. But you got to go anyway. And then when you get there, they're like, oh, we're not paying you. But this even goes more than that. They're like, okay, we're gonna, whenever we talk to you about different drugs and shit, you know we pay you. We, it's like the drug company gives us money to do this, so we just share it with you. Or we just pocket the money and tell you you have to come anyway. You get paid on the clock. Either way, they wouldn't get money. They wouldn't give the money to the people that were supposed to be doing the training uh, or whatever. You either do this and prescribe the subsis or you don't get the money. Prosecutors go through 10 different prescribers, all roughly matching the same pattern. All right, Berlikoff, sales VP, hired Rowan, here we go, the dominoes are falling, uh, with whom he'd worked at a previous employer as sales representative and assigned him to market to, to a single doctor. The indictment alleges that after being given a paid uh, speaker gig, that that physician went from prescribing substance about twice a week to 11 times a week. Between August 2012 and December 2012, the indictment says, Insys paid the doctor $24,000. Berlikoff wrote Rowan a note, quote, Congrats, you are now officially number one in the company with only one doctor. Ooh, I'm pretty sure your formula worked. You may want to pass it along to your team and get other doctors to, or get other uh, sales VPs to bribe more doctors to prescribe more pills or not pills, but deadly mouth spray, highly addictive, opioid mouth spray that's 50 times stronger than heroin. Don't forget that. All right. Between in and uh, about August 12th and May 15th, or August 2012 and May 2015, the indictment alleges that doc that doctor particularly was paid 229640 for speaking events. We're talking about a period of less than three years, all right, many of which were sham events. Those are my favorite, by the way, uh, attended by friends or office staff. The doctor wrote 2,148 prescriptions for substance during the same period. I wonder how much each one of those prescriptions are worth. doesn't even matter because that's a lot. 2,148 prescriptions for substance during that period. The indictment alleges Rowan hired another sales representative to execute the same strategy with another doctor. That physician allegedly wrote 984 substance prescriptions between in or about February 2013 and May 2015 while receiving $103,350. So it's about $100,000 every thousand uh, prescriptions, it looks like, or, you know, 10 to 1. Uh, not a bad gig, you know. In fact, anybody would be tempted to participate in, in this, uh, shall we call it, uh, just straight up bribery. Um, a third prescriber in Michigan allegedly prescribed uh, substance 2,847 times between November 2012 and June 2014 uh, while being paid 138000 $435. So it looks like they got shorted, but way to keep it classy, Michigan. Michigan is definitely home to a lot of uh, opioid addicts, heroin addicts, you name it, man. The pharmaceutical industry has had their way with Michigan for a very long time. Let's just say that. I'm sure I'm just speaking out of Michigan because I'm from here. A lot of people probably say that about their state, you know, and it's true. Florida, ravaged, just, just pummeled by pills. Um, the huge volume of prescriptions created another problem. Insurers couldn't authorize them fast enough. There's that DEA problem coming in. It is a controlled substance after all. 
uh, INSYS created a new kind of employee called an area business liaison who worked in the doctor's office but was paid by INSYS to convince insurers to pay for his drug. Wow, that is really detailed stuff. That is really, that's a really big, high-level conspiracy. This is a conspiracy now. Because you have all these people on this totem pole of, uh, of, of blame that's, that has nothing to do but fall. You have them setting up intricate networks of doctors and prescribers and... Uh, now we have these, these, uh, people that just kind of hang out at the doctor's office, goon, goon squads that go hang out at doctor's office and sit there all day on the phone with insurance goons telling them that they're going to do it. You're going to do this, whether you like it or not. I mean, what do these calls even sound like, man? Oh uh, yeah, you're going to do this. You're going to, you're going to prescribe this. You're going to let this prescription go through and you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for that shit. So the insurance companies are probably pretty mad because they're on the hook for millions of dollars worth of these fraudulently um, obtained prescriptions that were given out for this highly deadly and addictive fentanyl mouth spray. So that's a conspiracy. Whatever charges they get, please add conspiracy to that. To, I heard it gives you more time in jail or something. It doesn't even matter. Whatever, what matters to me is that these people are out of business, but it's not, that's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. If it does, I will be jumping up and down for days. You won't be able to get me out of that. The indictment says a woman close to practitioner number three was hired to fill this position. The indictment makes another allegation related to a fourth doctor from Florida who allegedly paid $260,000 in speaking fees, was paid, and wrote 2,030 subs prescriptions between August 2012 and November 2015. So he got that average of 10 to 1, maybe a little, he got a little bit nipped on it, but he still did pretty well. Uh, Ber Berlikoff and Rowan invited the doctor to INSA's headquarters in Arizona and took him out to a club. Berlikoff allegedly sent a sales representative a text, quote, went fantastic last night, practitioner number four said, and I got back around, or with, with practitioner four, and I got back around 4 a.m. He had to, he had to have one of the best, he had to have had one of the best nights of his life. The week later, the prescriber wrote 17 sepsis prescription in less than one week. Rowan allegedly texted him, we appreciate you more than you could believe. Leaving that meeting, Alec and I felt very confident and uh, and I was going to, that it was going to happen. And you show loyalty to us like no other. You need anything at all, it is done. Thank you for being you. Babich left Incess last November. Since then, Incess has been trying to convince investors that it has become a different company since these exec executives left. Kapoor took over as chief executive and has said that he put in place new systems to prevent abuses and the company is focused only on the cancer pain market for sepsis. Kapoor has also tried to put the focus on the company's experimental medicines, including a synthetic version of a chemical found in marijuana that may have been an effect on seizures, that may have had an effect on seizures and a spray version of naloxone, an uh, antidote for opioid overdose. You should definitely make that naloxone and give it away for free to everybody that you prescribe this ridiculous mouth spray. Anyway, the company is currently searching for a new chief executive to replace Kapoor. Since October, Kapoor's estimated net worth has dropped about $600 million in part of the decline, in part because of the decline of incest shares. Yes, incest shares did take a 60% drop off the top of this news, but then it bounced back up another 30%, and they're basically looking like they might get back to normal uh, after all this PR work that they just did there, talking about how they're, they, you know, they turned over a new leaf or whatever, but my guess is the next guy is going to look at the predatory practices that uh, these these shysters did and they're going to go ahead and enact the same policy practices and the same scams and the same bribes. If not, they're going to get a little creative about it and you're going to see the numbers a little bit lower than they were before. So the stock price might not go all the way back to where it was because these people that trade in this shit, they know all about it. 